Hello and welcome to the Ground Truthing and Virtual Field Trips tutorial. In this walkthrough we'll be covering the necessary steps to create inexpensive virtual environments that can be created using mobile phone images and recorded sounds. For this tutorial you're going to need a number of software downloaded and installed and links to these are included in the description below. The first stage is to capture a scene in 3D and to do this you'll need to select a place that you have easy access to and the techniques we are using work best with features that you can photograph from multiple angles. The quality of your images is probably the most important and possibly challenging part of this process as it will have a dramatic effect upon the quality of the final 3D models. After you've captured your images, set your mobile phone or audio recording device up next to your object of interest. You should then record about three minutes of ambient sound to play in your virtual environment. You can find more information about this process in the accompanying materials on the project website link below. The next step is to take your materials and to put them onto your computer. Uh, I've already imported the pictures from a camera and the audio from a camera and I'm going to create a file structure on my desktop that we're going to call back to and keep all of our project uh, materials in the one place. So create a new folder and call this folder 3D project. And inside 3D project we're going to create uh, some folders for our materials. The first one is going to contain our audio. The next is going to be our Blender project. Then we're going to have our model. And we're going to import our pictures here. And we're also going to have our Unity project here. So this is where I'm going to keep all of our, uh, our project materials. So the first thing to do is to bring in our pictures and our audio. So copy them from your device into their respective folders. Next we're going to create a Meshroom project and you can get Meshroom from the link in the description below and you can select uh, whichever version works best for, for your machine. So I'll open Meshroom. Okay, so when you open up Meshroom you'll be able to see a number of different windows open up and the ones that we'll be using the most of are Images, Image Viewer, the Graph Editor down below, down below, the 3D Viewer and the settings for the 3D Viewer and the Node window here. So the Images area is where you drag and drop your, your pictures and the Image Viewer is where you can view the individual pictures selected in the Images folder. In the 3D Viewer, this is where the uh, 3D model will appear when it's finished and the settings on the right hand side here control the, uh, the scene here in the 3D viewer. Down below is the graph editor where um, the 3D reconstruction process is visualized and where it can be modified. If, um, really this is for advanced users and we'll just be doing the bare minimum to, uh, to get our 3D model made. In the last window it's the node display and this is where you find your configurable property properties for the selected node in the graph editor there. So the first stage is to bring our images in. And we'll go to our pictures folder and we will select them all and we will drag them in. So I have a, a lot of pictures in my folder. Um, this process can work with fewer or more depending on the machine that you have and the amount of time that you have available for processing. So you'll see that the images window now is populated with the images that we've just imported and in the image viewer we can see the individual pictures. So to set up our project to start constructing uh, a 3D model we need to um, set it up in the graph editor and the node window. So select texturing and the node window will then populate with the texturing information. And we're just going to make some minor changes. Uh, we get, first we're going to change the texture side 
uh, we're going to put reduce that down to 2048, and this will make the uh, the the the, uh, the texture that you're going to be visualizing on your 3D model uh, 2K, and you can start here and scale things up depending on um, your outputs. The next we're going to change is the unwrap method. We're going to change this to LSCM. And this just makes sure that we get a single texture out that we can then use again later in Unity. So with those selected, those settings need to be saved and your pictures need to be saved. So we're going to go to File, Save As. And we're going to go to our desktop, to our 3D project, and we're going to save our Meshroom project in model. And let's call it something like model. And click save. And that should then populate our folder for model with this .mg. And that's the Meshroom folder. Um, project save type. Okay, so with your project saved, um, you're ready to start meshing. And this process can take from 20 minutes, if you have only a, a few images in there, um, say 20 to 30 images from your mobile phone, or it can take several hours if you've got um, a slow machine and a lot of pictures. So in order to start doing this, um, we're going to need to make sure that our machine is set up to run for long periods of time. So you're going to have to think about uh, your power settings in uh, Windows. Like if your machine goes to sleep after an hour, it's going to interrupt the cycle and, and it will, will pause. Um, if you go into uh, screensaver mode, that's fine. Um, but if, if your machine powers down, that's, that's going to cause you a, a big problem. So you need to go into your, your power settings um, to personalize, uh, sorry, display settings. And you can change your uh, power and sleep settings here. Um, so on, on battery power, uh, and on, when plugged in for my laptop, and there are sleep settings on battery power and PC. So mine is set to never go to sleep, and the screen will go into a uh, screensaver after an hour. Okay, so when you're ready, and set up to start processing, you just click the start button at the top of the screen. And you'll see that there's a progress bar that gives you the overall progress from start to finish. That will go from left to right. And also, you'll notice that in your graph editor, you can then uh, follow the, the, the individual processes as they happen uh, across the entire length of the, uh, the process. So that's going to take a couple of uh, hours, so I'm just going to stop and we'll come back to this and I'll let you know how long it took and uh, we can continue with our modeling. Okay, welcome back to um, our tutorial. The meshing process has completed. Um, a few things to, to note is the amount of time that it took. Um, it was about 25 plus when I started and now it is 3.53. Um, the other thing to notice is that the pictures now um, have a little green camera in the corner. And if I can find an example for you. So the, the green camera means that, uh, let me see that there, the camera reconstructed. So it used this camera in the meshing process. Um, and the Camera intrinsics are, are all there as well. Um, so the, the Meshroom program was able to use these images for the final sort of um, construction. And that has appeared here in the 3D viewer. So using your mouse, you can uh, move the model around with your left click, and you can use your scroll wheel to zoom in and out. If you click the mouse wheel, you'll be able to move the scene in its entirety. So let's just move the reconstruction around so that it is there. And when you click on one of these cameras in the scene, uh, the selected camera will move in the move to in the images and the image viewer. 
So just to make this a little bit easier to see, I'm going to take out the grid and I'm going to take out the gizmo and I'm going to zoom in and rotate everything around a little bit. So you can see all of the camera pictures that I all of the pictures I took are now reconstructed as a point cloud. So let me take out the cameras. So you can move change the scale of the cameras up and down so they're easier to see what's happening there and you can change the size of the points as well by using the settings here. So I'm going to hide the cameras by making them really small and you can see the 3D reconstruction as a point cloud. Okay, so if I now load the model using this button here, the texturing will now be uh, shown on top of the model. So that could take a, a couple of moments to reconstruct. So I'm going to hide the structure from motion and look at our textured model. Okay, so using the settings that we have below, so the texture side is 2K, uh, the, it's a PNG and it is an LSCM unwrap method, so it is one image on the, uh, the in the model. Okay, and what you will also see is all of this other noise in there. So when meshing is working, it's not only working to the center point, the image of interest. <laughs> it's got a little haircut there on top as well. Uh, it is also reconstructing other um, objects in the scene. So you can see houses in the background. Um, you can see the promenade down there as well in the green path. Uh, you can see the, the jogging path as people run up and down. But our object of interest is just this little piece here. So the next step we are going to look at trimming off all of this extra um, material by using Blender. So I'm going to file it automatically saved. So I'm going to quit. And we're just going to take a look in the model folder before we move on. So our Meshroom project is here on the top level of our model folder and Meshroom has created this Meshroom cache underneath. So if we go in there, there's a lot of materials and information in there. And the folder in particular that we're interested in is the output from the texturing. So each of these represents um, all of the processes that were happening in the graph editor. Um, and so if we go in texturing, there's a long string of alphanumeric values this fold on this folder and inside that is a texture as a PNG and if we open that you'll see that it is a flat image and it control contains everything from within our mesh and there's the textured mesh OBJ and this is the file that we're going to be opening in Blender to uh, trim off all of that extra material. 